Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a kind of quick and easy card. I started off with this mini slimline lattice wafer die and I die cut some white cardstock with that wafer die. And there just happened to be enough space left on that piece of cardstock to stamp my main image, which is from the Gnome Lucky little mini stamp set that Simon just released uh, with their Good Luck Charm release. I thought it was just super cute. And I was like, it's been sitting here and I wanted to use it. So put it in my Misty and I inked up the stamp with intense black ink. And this is Simon's 120 pound smooth white cardstock. Nina also works really, really well. I kind of use them interchangeably now over the last however long. So right at this moment, this is real time coloring, not sped up, uh, especially with COVID coloring. Because people are like, oh, I wish I could color as fast as you. You know, this is this is the real speed that I go at. I just speed it up in videos because otherwise we'll be here all day. And I don't usually have anything groundbreaking to share when I do the voiceovers for it. So now I've sped it up and... Yeah, started with his little hat. I just use cool grays for that. Uh, most of this I'm doing my, you know, old standby of working darkest to lightest. That's just a, I don't know, a lazy technique over the years. Um, if you're newer to Copic markers, I do recommend doing lightest to darkest. It gives you more control and it's easier to add in little bits of dark, you know, darker shades than it is to take it away. So I did the cool grays for his hat. And then I did the little bits of skin tone that you could see. And then I used warm grays for his little beard and just kind of did a flicking motion to give it that little bit of texture. And then I stuck with one combo of greens for all the lettering and his little outfit just to keep life a little simpler. So I used G09, G07, and then G05. And... With the letters, I did them all the same, so I'm not going to show all of that in video. With his little outfit, I went lightest to darkest. It's like, you can achieve the same look either way. But again, it's just personal preference, really. And I did the little clover he was holding with the same greens as well. It's fun to mix it up and use, like, different shades of green. But this was one of those things where it's like, I just didn't want to think too much. I just wanted to sit and color and enjoy this little image because it's just cute. So... I went latest darkest with this one. And like I said, you get, uh, you do definitely have more control, you know, but once you get more comfortable with it, you can kind of do whatever, whatever you want. So I colored in the little clover and then for the little uh, band around his hat and then also the outline around all of these letters, I just used uh, yellow Copic markers for that and kept that simple as well. So I used Y19. That's the one I'm going to use to do all the outlines around. I'm not going to do any like shading on those outlines um, because they're so thin and narrow and no, just no. So colored all that in and then off camera finished coloring in the rest of the letters in the exact same way I did the first one. And then I pulled out my favorite white gel pen, my Jelly Roll 10. So the widest white gel pen and added highlights as always, again, not following any sort of um, reference in regards to like lighting or shadows or anything like that. I just add them wherever I think they're going to look nice. I also added several to his little beard, again, to give it texture. And then just run around and added the highlights to all the letters. It gives them that more like kind of 3D effect. So added that with the gel pen and then made sure the gel pen was dry. That doesn't take very long, but... Trust me, you always want to make sure it's dry before you run anything through your die cut machine because nothing's worse than coloring an image and then smearing things. Always the worst. Anyway, it was dry. I used a little coordinating wafer die. So I lined that up, taped that into place with my little spell binders tape so that the die doesn't move when I run it through my machine. And then the card base itself, I cut a piece of cardstock to six and a quarter inches. That's why I have that washi tape on my guillotine trimmer. It marks the six and a quarter and six and a half inch mark. And my little uh, score buddy does not have a score line at the three and one eighth inch mark. So I just use my Fiskars trimmer because I could just line up the cardstock and then I just use the 
track that the blade runs through with my bone folder and then I was able to score this. So that way I have a three and one eighth by six and a quarter inch card. And then I pulled out this Green Valley six by six paper pack from Tonic. It's beautiful. I just got it in a recent order because I have shown the gold one how many times in videos. And then I was able to get my hands on this green one and it's beautiful. <laughs> so I trimmed down some of the green glitter paper from that pack to put behind this uh, slim, mini slimline lattice die cut. And I'm using Craft Tacky Glue. You always want to use a really good strong adhesive when adhering on top of glitter paper because things like tape runners and that usually will not adhere to that glitter paper. So I just ran a little bit around the border, little dots of it. It adheres great. And then I decided rather than play around with foam tape, I just die cut more scraps with that coordinating wafer die for the Gnome Lucky set. And I'm going to adhere those together. So that'll give me my dimension. This is also a nice way to um, give things more strength so they don't get crushed in the mail, you know. But honestly, I usually don't have a problem with that. But options are always great. So I stacked uh, three layers together with that and then topped it with the one that I had colored and die cut. And then off camera, I had white heat emboss, a little sentiment from that same set onto some black cardstock. And that I'm going to pop on there as well. So it'll say, I'm so, I'm so lucky to know you. <laughs> I love punny sentiments. That's also why I think I just was it, like loving this little set because anything punny, I'm like, yes. Anyway, so then on the inside of my card base, I stamped another sentiment from this set, the one that says a good friend is like a four leaf clover, hard to find and lucky to have. So I stamped that one. And then there's a little solid four leaf clover image in the set. And I stamped it with some of my positively saturated inks. I'm going to link to the new set of greens. Like there's multiple sets of greens, but the ones I would have used, I don't have them yet. So I used these ones, but they weren't the right shade, but I just made it work. But yeah, if I had the other ones, I would have used those because they they were like the perfect matching shades of green. So anyway, I also stamped um, a corny little mini slimline envelope with those clovers just to tie it all together. And then, of course, as a final bit of embellishment, I pulled out three different sets of embellishments. <laughs> I've got Trinity stamps. I have Brilliant Citrine embellishments. Those are the crystals. I have Luminous Lemon Baubles, which are um, the yellow pearls. And then I have the Lemon Drop Dream embellishment mix, which are heart-shaped. And there's clear and kind of satin finish ones in there. So pretty. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Three different types of embellishments, because why not? <laughs> when I say this is like me going simpler, this this is it. Anyway, I adhered those into place with dabs of craft tacky glue. And then once those are all adhered, this card is complete with all its like glitter and bling and cute little gnome and matching little envelope. Just fun. So I love how the glitter peeks through that die cut background because I originally was just going to do white on white because that's kind of my thing. I just really like having like full panel die cuts for that but then putting that green glitter cardstock behind it I was like yes perfect. So as always I'll have a link below the video to my blog post. I will link to all the supplies I used. Um, in the blog post there'll be picture links so you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I very much appreciate it and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!